I actually want to start promoting some artists, uh, musicians, photographers. Hit me up. You can send that to me at expensivepastapod at gmail.com or just hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at underscore the shark boy. Before this week's episode of the Spit Bucket, I want to shout out Dynamic Visuals. Dynamic Visuals is a full video and production company that handles pre-production, filming, and editing. Yadira, who's in charge of Dynamic Visuals, is a passionate individual who seeks to collaborate with like-minded and like-hearted people. With Dynamic Visuals, you'll be met with enthusiasm and passion that matches your own. Whether it's promoting your business, your e-commerce, personal branding, music, or anything in between, Dynamic Visuals' goal is to bring captivating and timeless video content that will create the best impact for your business. Yadira with Dynamic Visuals is actually the one who made the Days Gone By music video for Paper Boats, and that can be found on her Vimeo. So make sure to check that out along with her website. She is definitely the one to go with. She is fantastic. Uh, Again, her website is dynamicvisuals.com. That's dynamic with a K. D-Y-N-A-M-I-K visuals.com. Let her know that the spit bucket sent you. Now on with the show. Welcome to the spit bucket hotel party. Thanks for joining us. Oh, look at that. We're going to get to Philly with a Uchi bag. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I don't think I have a story. Let's just start. Let's just jump what into that, what it. What does that have to do with? Let's just say I live in a constant state of fear. Me too. All right, well, welcome back. Hey, shut up. You got your on your shirt. <laughs> welcome back to the don't spit bucket. Don't <laughs> We've been gone. My don't name, I am... On her titties. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Dumpy Abonce. Damn. All right. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Never much. Uh, you can call me... The mechanic, Omar Bonsai, because I can fix your tires or suck your dick. One or the other. <laughs> I don't know which one. I might do both. I'm trying something different this year. Is, do, can you, does it, do mechanics fix your tires? <laughs> does it, does it, <laughs> I know they give out blowjobs, but what about your tires? <laughs> you know? Uh, no, I, well, I, I fixed that. Excuse I, me, ma'am? We changed uh, Jam's tire today, so that's why. I'm riding on my spare. Yeah. Uh, how many hours did it take? It didn't take that long. The sucking dick thing, though, I don't know where that came from. But anyway. My dad did a lot of it. Uh, oh. <laughs> also at the table, you can hear, it's, uh, she's been eating an incredible amount of Fruity Pebbles. It's Jam Ginto. Oh, look, I feel bad about it. I know Why? how disgusting that makes me as a human being. It's Fruity Pebbles. What's wrong with that? I said, might as well be, if I'm eating Fruity Pebbles, I might as well be eating a Funfetti cake out of a rusty pan. Pretty much. I do that. <laughs> I don't know about you. All right. I know it's trashy, but I'm on my second box since we got home. And you're gonna you're gonna be hearing a lot of sucking noises coming from his mic. He's got a goddamn high chew in his mouth. <laughs> it's Ivan Prado. Hey, what up? I owed him a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I stole a few from him in our trip. <laughs> oh, look, there's a big difference between an American high chew and a Japanese high chew. Is that All true? Right. Very Is that high true? I haven't noticed yet. I mean, probably. But Not just appearance wise. Yeah. Because the Japanese ones, they have like little specks in them. And I think that's what makes them extra juicy. Isn't it just like they more got sugar? Little, they got granulated like little crisples, sugar. Cris- yes. Crisples in them. Crisples. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the oh. reason we've been gone for so long and got some Japanese high chews is because we've been out of town. We went to Finland. <laughs> oh, wait. No, we didn't. No, we went to India. Yeah, all right. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, the past, like, two weeks, we've been uh, in Japan, and we didn't really... We have vlogs coming out of that, but we didn't record any any podcasts, so... Bless you. That was Mabel fucking sneezing. We are back at it with all of our bullshits. You already know. (laughs) I'm back to being miserable. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. (laughs) But you can drive now. That's true. Is it... Okay, so what... What's the thing you guys missed the most about being back, I guess? The space. When we got home, we put our suitcases down, we started running. <laughs> you said, I have so much space for activities. And just- really? Literally, this room... I thought the house got bigger. This room is so much bigger than the whole apartment we were in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were, uh, we were <coughs> crammed in a little Japanese apartment. There was four of us in there, and everywhere you looked, there was another person there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you could not as escape each other at, we were together for four at any whole point, weeks 
I could have my back to the wall and I could touch another wall, yeah. either with my foot or with my hand. Uh huh. That's how close everything was. Yep. You said you hit your forehead on the doorknob in the toilet. Multiple <laughs> times I hit my head on the... I gotta say, take coming home and taking a shower. Fuck. Holy shit. Coming home and taking a shit here, I oh. couldn't wait to go back. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but my home experience, like toilet experience, wonderful. I mean, yeah, it's fine. No, it's but Japanese... Uh, oh my god, Japanese toilet. Like, you sit down and it's warm. Right. And it's not because someone else was sitting on it? Right. It's nice. It's real yeah, nice. And it's actually, di- it's worse when you sit down and it's warm because somebody's been on it. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh. What about when you sit down on the Japanese ones and then the, the like, the waterfall starts pouring? Yeah. Yeah. They, they got, like, rainforest sounds. And, mm-hmm. God I wish damn. there was, like, a privacy button on my toilet. I know. The Japanese toilets are the best. If you guys ever... D- can go to Japan, go and take a shit. You, it will be the best one you will ever take. Probably. In public, not not even like Your the ones in home. chances are very high that you're stepping into a really nice bathroom. The whole two weeks we were there, maybe two bathrooms that I didn't like. The yeah. only one I found that was bad was the very last one I used in uh, that family mart that I told you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we'll talk about that in yeah. just a second. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, took, I took a shit in the train station in Akihabara. And holy shit, it was the nicest. It was so nice that I took a picture of the of the stall. <laughs> so I'll put that up on the Facebook page so you guys can see what a Japanese toilet is like. It's got all these fancy buttons. The toilet was clean. Mm-hmm. The door that to get into the stall is from like floor to ceiling. So Ooh. it's not like people ever even and it's an angle. So no one ever even can see you're in there. And the nice thing about Japanese bathrooms too is uh, when the stall door closes, it basically kind of blends into the wall. Right. So you don't really know how m- so a lot of the time it's hard to tell where the stalls are until someone opens them. Right. So it's it feels incredibly private. Right. And then as soon as I opened the door and the the seat opened up, just rainforest sound started playing as soon as you sit down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you one thing I struggled with severely is there cuz they could have the nicest fucking bathroom but there's soap dispensers, I can never figure out how because so? it's either I'm over here looking like an idiot because I'm like, okay, this piece of metal, I can tell this is where I'm supposed to get soap. Uh Uh-huh. So I never know if it's a sensor, if it's one you have to push down, and the new one that surprised me, you have to put your hand under it. I don't like those. And hit it upwards. (laughs) And I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to know that? It's like a little nipple thing and you... you, Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever had that issue. I don't like those. I did. And so all the time, I'm just like, someone's washing their hands next to me, Mm -hmm. and I'm over here and I have to look at it. And I'm like, just like waving my hand all around it, trying to feel for it. <laughs> and then I finally get it, and I literally go, "Ha!" And then the lady <laughs> looks at me, and I'm like, I just, wash my hand <laughs> "Just wash them faster and leave." Mm-hmm. Right? You're like, "Sorry, I have a problem." That's funny. The the only thing that I came across in Japanese bathrooms that I'm just like, eh, "What didn't they think of this?" Is there's no uh, ha- hand dryers or like paper towels. Mm-hmm. Right. So you just kind of leave with wet hands. And the hand dryers that they did have weren't the best. No, uh, so I found but some... I would take that over using horrible bathrooms here with yeah. paper towels. Yeah. So the bathroom experience is nice enough where that didn't matter. I, I also found some that didn't have soap dispensers. That's true. Like, I saw that too. Um, where? Why? There was the one, the one bathroom that we went to in Yokohama uh, where you guys were waiting for me, and I think I was the mm-hmm. only one that used it. And we were like in the middle of that nice walkway. That one oh, near, right yeah. by the temple. Shrines. That one didn't have it. I think a lot of the ones that are like outdoorsies don't have it. That makes sense, though. But I'm I sure think I feel like I remember seeing some in like some kind of mall or something that not having soap either. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand it. Speaking of malls, though, the food that you guys can get from malls is ridiculous. I wouldn't even call it fast food. Uh, it's not fast food at all. It's like full restaurants. They have yeah. full like grills where they make yakisoba. That's delicious. Right. It's fast, but like. It's still high made quality. Fresh. Yeah, but even at sit-down restaurants, we would get our food really fast. That's true. But uh, except for pom pom porn. Except the pom pom porn. I don't want to talk about that. I was kind of disappointed, but I don't want to say. <laughs> but uh, what was, I mean, what was that meal that you got in Yokohama at the mall? Ooh, I got fucking fried rice with steak on it. <laughs> it was like a Come full, on. like medium rare steak on top. <laughs> I wish it was more steak, honestly, just because I mean it was good. Yeah. Did you guys get steak too. on a stick? We got some Kobe beef on the stick. It, it, it was Kobe beef. 
Calling it steak. Corby brief. <laughs> it was, it was so good reef. that they named a, chi- a child after it, who mm-hmm. then grew up, and because of his name and the prestige behind it, went on to make Space Jam Two. Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> LeBron James. <laughs> Kobe. LeBron is just English for Kobe. <laughs> You know? Oh man! What uh, what else do you guys want to talk about on the trip? What was your What was your favorite? The toilets are the best part. The toilets were <laughs> the best part. But what was your favorite? I guess day snacks. Or, or snacks. What the, okay? Just what do you guys? I ate so much. Or memory? What's your favorite wish? What's my favorite wish? Uh, my favorite memory was coming home, so I didn't have to hear that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's hard to choose. I ate so much good stuff. Probably the night we went to that show. That was a good night. Oh yeah, so we went. I was to... really tired because we ran a lot. We we did have to run a lot, but we went to go see Lucy Two and Bearware, and then Fousey Tube. <laughs> <laughs> Fousey Tube as a headliner. Yeah. Uh, but if you guys haven't heard of Lucy Two or Bearware, give them a listen. They are fucking fantastic bands. Yeah. Bearware is in English, so if you're not into like music in a language you can't understand, listen to Bearware. Right. They were awesome, and the sweetest boys, the sweetest right. Japanese emo boys, and we. Have the very first signature. And I sucked all their dicks. Hey, high five. Hey. Me too. <laughs> In the I want, smoking area. I want second though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we. Uh, I saw. I bought the Lucy Two album, and I got them all to sign it, and I have that on display in my room now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I even wanted the Bearware album, but didn't have enough money. That's true. Just for the day. I mean. It was 20 bucks. I had more than 20 bucks. <laughs> so I, I let Ivan borrow so, another 10 bucks, mm-hmm. and then we went and got the Bearware album, and then Ivan asked them to sign it, and they're like, oh, I've never done that before. <laughs> what, what do you mean? What they, do you mean? Yeah, they have, they're so mean? indie that they only have like 180 likes on Facebook. Right. So do our boys a favor and go add them on Facebook. I can't believe Listen it, to them on Spotify. There's, I have not stopped listening to them since we got back. Damn. They're a great band. Right. Have you listened to them since you got back? I've been listening to My Chemical Romance. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I've been listening to them. I love the the my uh it's like the Winnie the Pooh one where it's my uh, drug addiction. My drug addiction yeah. and then the next one, my chemical romance and it's the pretentious Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> that's what that's me. <laughs> that's me. Yes, so please listen to Bearware, please listen to Lucy too. They're they're fantastic, super, super nice people. Give them a listen. And if for, for any reason you're somehow in Japan, they put on a good show. They do. The guitar player for Bearware takes his shoes off, mm-hmm. and uh, he's just barefoot playing on yeah. stage. That's how you know he's good. Yeah, he had a little Snoopy uh, sweater on. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's cute. But yeah, it was so. It was Japanese concerts are strange because we got there and we go into like where the actual venue takes place because you have to go past the door. Um, it was, I guess, like a bar venue but the bar was separate from the actual venue you had to go through like two gigantic uh soundproof doors right so when you're in the bar area you can't even tell music's happening literally and it's only like what 20 feet away it's crazy so yeah, they did a real good job of uh you lose all your service I, in there i was literally like so where's where's the show because i i didn't even see that there was a door there yeah and I'm like, is, is this where the show's going to take place? Like, right here in this little, like, lobby area? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, in front of the like, little cafe? Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. <laughs> I can fit a whole band in here, you said. Because then they were paid for the tickets and they're like, all right, go ahead. Then I saw the door and I'm like, huh. Yeah, they open the door and then you hear the music in there. They go, oh, shit, it's in there. It was literally like a <laughs> suction cup of sound. It was. It was strange. Wow, that's a good way to put it. So then you walk you walk in and then there was a Charlotte as Mine was playing, which was uh, one of the opening bands. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, it, it was our first experience where in between songs, it just got dead quiet. Right. Like, I thought something bad happened. Like, someone broke a Gortar or something. Right. Yeah, no, it was just quiet. They In between songs, like, you can hear people talking without the mic or you can hear them tuning like you can hear them tuning their guitar when if you've been to a concert before and they they tune their guitars or whatever they the tuner pedal cuts off the signal right. so then you don't hear them actually tuning it you just hear mm-hmm. the physical you just sound. hear like the little strings plucking but at concerts in america you don't hear that shit just because people are loud all the time during concerts right. and over there it was so quiet in between songs that from across the room 
you can hear them picking their string to tune it. Right. It was crazy. And then just quiet banter, followed by a few claps here and there. <laughs> and then, yeah, and uh, even when the headlining band, Bearware, was on, uh, and Lucy too, the thing was that it, like people were giving each other their space. Like, no one was, like, bum-rushing the stage. Right. Like, everyone was having a good time on their own. It's just so different, you know? It was I guess that's why Americans different. do rock and roll the best. Yeah, Honestly, true. I'd prefer this, like... No, I I'm mean... Too, I'm too old to... I love the hype of, like, an American concert, but I, in my old age now, I can definitely appreciate the quietness of just kind of, like, standing there, nodding we were, to the music. Like, we were in the front row. Like, after <laughs> after uh, Charlotte is Mine uh, went on, everyone kind of went out, got some drinks, came back. So we're like, let's take this opportunity to go up to the very front, like, right in front of the stage. Right. It's just so when Lucy 2 and Bearware come on, like, we have the best spots for them. Right. So uh, we did that, and it was just quiet in between sets. Even while they were changing... Full band sets. It was right. quiet. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, they played a little bit of music, like, <clears throat> on, like, the overhead. Mm-hmm. But even that, that wasn't too loud. Yeah. It was just you enough just to fill the noise. You can talk normal volume while the yeah. music was on. It was nice. Literally. And, like, because, Ivan, you never really did. I've been to both concerts that you've been to. Mm-hmm. So, I'm assuming, like, at a concert where you're in the front row and you're getting destroyed... I've been to many the of those. It's so I mean, like, it's anything, so hard to enjoy thing, it. The only thing anywhere near close to that is watching uh, uh what's her name Bishop play. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> those guys are. I couldn't hear for that well after, and I had. I've been in. to like I've been to yeah, me too. Many a concert, me and Carl, everything from Soldier Field to, to Soldier Boy <laughs> <laughs> here in uh, in Zion, mm-hmm. everything in between. And this was definitely the most pleasurable concert experience yeah, I've ever had. Yeah. Like, when we went to, even not that long ago, we went to uh, uh, Tiger's Jaw, their 10-year mm-hmm. anniversary for their nice. self-titled album. Honestly, I kind of wanted to go to that, but I didn't know when it w- was. And also, like... <laughs> you have internet! You could look that stuff up! Your favorite well, band has come many well, times. I didn't, have, I didn't they? know that was happening, but then I, you guys were like, yeah, we're going to the show. I'm like, oh, damn, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I I just I didn't know about it. But, yeah, no, if you're, if you're anywhere on the floor... You're gonna get pushed and sweat on, and there's just gonna be like people touching Elbows you. Elbows in your ear. Right. And yeah, it's like it, a lot of people like that, and if you like that, it's cool, you know. Because some people want to go and like just. I mean, I, stupid. I you know? yeah. But, there's there's always like one or two guys who are like way too enthusiastic about yeah. it, and like don't give a fuck. But, but it's uh, nice to be able to like. It was nice to enjoy chill, the music, you know. Yeah, but that, also it doesn't chill, but also have it not be like jazz music. Not yeah, jazz music mm-hmm. is bad, but. But, like, people but like were dancing on their own and yeah, everything. They were, like, and rocking like, out on their own, like, in their own space. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Damn. I kind I, I mean, I, I'm sure as a younger person, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. But after having American concert experiences where during, like, my favorite songs, I can't even enjoy the song because someone's literally got their, the, their elbow on, like, the back of my neck. Or it's like, ah, oh, shit, <laughs> now I'm missing the song because this guy's fucking sweating on me, you know? Right. So it was nice over there where like every single song that I knew that came on that I really liked, I was able to enjoy it, like watch everyone and right. so that was that was really, really nice. So Japanese time. concert experiences are completely fucking like it's right. caught me completely off guard. But and also the the thing that was uh kind of strange too was how much our friends and like the people we know fit into that scene. Right. Because it was it was it was an indie concert. Mm-hmm. Um so it, it was strange seeing the American sad boy kind of indie uh like type. shops at vans yeah yeah type of thing but in but everyone's Japanese because all the concerts that we go to and like all the concerts that we've thrown are for our, our like Illinois sad boy <laughs> friends you know right so um it's and, and, a bu- same and honestly a a bunch of vans employees all, so, yeah <laughs> so it was wow. strange seeing the same exact type of people. But Japanese, right? Because for a second, if you look around, you for like since we're so used to like diversity everywhere we go here, it's like you kind of forget you're in a different country because you're just used to seeing like different faces. Mm-hmm. But then you're like, oh shit, we're the odd ones out here. As soon as uh, they close the song with "Arigato Gozaimasu," yeah, right. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, oh wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, excuse me. <laughs> that was a good time though. Yeah, honestly, Jam. What was your favorite wish? 
Just kind of just blend in together. We did. We were very busy. So, Honestly, though, I'm surprised how little time we spent at the apartment. It was great. <laughs> yeah, we were just doing shit, you know? I don't know. I don't know if I had, like... I just like going out and just buying dumb shit. Where's your favorite... How about where's your favorite area to hang out? That Even that's hard for me to figure out. Yeah. Because mm. I, I really like, like, Harajuku and Shibuya. Mm-hmm. But we didn't spend that much time there. Ikebukuro was fucking nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ikebukuro I loved was very it there. nice. Sunshine yeah. City, boy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then my boy Shinjuku never fails. Yeah. Cause it's cool because, like, the city parts, you know, that are just very um, commercial and stuff like that. Urban. Are still really nice. Compared, mm-hmm. And and then when you go to, like, the sightseeing areas are still really nice. So it's you get a good experience regardless of what you want to do, you know. Mm-hmm. If you want to be in a very touristy or, or urban area, it's still fun. Yeah. Or if you want to do sightseeing, that's still really Sleeping nice. Sleeping sucks, though, because it's not quiet there. That's true. Yeah. Uh, the the apartments themselves, like, it, we, we've we been to a hotel, and uh, the hotel was actually very, very quiet. Like, I didn't hear any mm-hmm. outside noise. But both apartments that we stayed in, the noise from outside comes in very easily. Mm-hmm. Like, in, like might yeah. as well be sleeping with, like, the fucking doors and the windows open. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. And that was annoying, but what can you do? Yep. It's a good trade off to being there. Deep in the city, you know? Yeah. That's true. We were uh we were actually staying right like if you've ever seen the movie Your Name or what is it called in Japanese? Kimi no Nawa? I think that's what it is. It's called uh, <laughs> <laughs> We were uh we were staying in Yotsuya, which is where the closing kind of scene takes place. If you guys have seen the movie, we were literally like a minute or two walk from the staircase where they like Wild. meet and the closing shot is. Mm-hmm. So we got some footage of that. That should be kind of fun to put together later on. <laughs> but uh, that was a good time. My favorite yeah. is my favorite is always just walking around neighborhoods and mm-hmm. seeing how beautiful like the houses is. Houses is houses do be beautiful. <laughs> houses. My, I think my favorite day was uh, probably Kamakura. It was yeah, that was a good day. It was a look it up. It's just like a city. It's so so green. And then you'll just stumble on, like, temples and shit like that. We it was had some fucking, awesome. uh, fucking, uh, good food, too. Yeah, I had, like, a cheese tart. And then, uh, do you guys want to tell the story about the little dog? Alright, oh. so we're sitting in the corner, minding our own fucking business. Omar's Barbecue eating- sauce on your titties. Omar's eating his cheese tart. I look up, and I was blessed with the sight of this gorgeous, puffy Sheba staring mm-hmm. directly at us from above, from... Like, what, a story above? Yeah, on the second story. Uh-huh. And then I gather all the fellas' attention. She said, hey, fellas. And hey. we look up and we're hey, like, oh, fellas. my God. Come to find out that's a Shiba cafe. Mm-hmm. And then he walks away. And we're like, you know, sad he's gone. He comes back with a friend. <laughs> and then we were convinced, like, all right, we got to fucking he go said, to the hey, Shiba bro. cafe. He said, hey, bro. But uh, another thing that happened in Kamakura... Uh, was we were on Japanese television like three or four oh, times. That was great. <laughs> that so was fucking funny. If anyone can help us, it's some random television show where they're interviewing people in Kamakura, but more specifically in like the main shopping street. Mm-hmm. And we were in the background like four or five times. And what we were doing every single time was uh, we would walk by the camera. Someone would quietly count one, two, three, four. And then we would all, no matter what we're doing, slowly turn and look right into the camera. <laughs> with no expression. <laughs> with on no our face. expression on our faces. Man. So hopefully they were in. Hopefully they keep at least one of those interviews, mm-hmm. or at the very least notice that four units from <laughs> America just keep looking directly into the camera. <laughs> oh man, that was great. We also had like a. Bomb fucking meal there. That burger. That rooftop burger. Yeah, we. I still think about. I it I only sometimes. had the slider version of the big burgers you guys got. That shit was still fucking good. It Those was, potatoes. Yeah, were some of the best potatoes. Ever. It was. I had mashed potatoes in Japan. Would you call it? It was good. Uh, would you guys call it like an American style of restaurant? I would say it's pretty. It American. was like a burger sliders burger are, place. Are very American, I'd say. But they they had yeah they had sliders and then they had like the regular size of the same yeah. burger. Um. And, like the whole menu was in English, and like, yeah. they had American music, and like, and they had right. like one burger that was like teriyaki something. Yeah, so um, I'd say it's a very like. American but this style. restaurant, oh my god! If you're in Kamakura, 
mm-hmm. go to this restaurant not only because of the how good the burgers and the food was, but sit out on the patio. Sit on the patio. It is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's uh at the very it's the very first hamburger shop. I saw a fucking hawk. It's on the sixth floor of some building, but all the buildings around there aren't very tall at all. So you could get a really good look out into the city. And then since it's like a really lush green area, you can see like hilltops and like... And the bay too, right? Kamachi Dori. You can, no, that's the ocean, boy. The o- that's that was the, the ocean. ocean. Oh, damn. I so out a it's bit the more. very first <laughs> uh, hamburger shop going into Kamachi Dori. You go to the sixth floor in the balcony and then you can just... See all the way out to the we ocean. We saw fucking hawks swooping. Yeah, swooping down for food. Yeah, it was is beautiful, beautiful restaurant. I'm sure yeah. it's even more beautiful at night because oh, they damn. have little lights inside. That's true. So that's the sure. restaurant to go to when you're in Kamakura. Yeah, I remember when we saw a big ass rat in Shibuya, <laughs> and, I, and I had a mental breakdown moments after. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's talk about the rat first. <laughs> boy looked like a small dog. <laughs> for real, that so, boy was. <laughs> Who's the first one that saw the rat? Uh, Jan, I think. No, I think it was Carl. I think Carl's it? yeah, Carl I like you guys giggled. Were kidding. She's, she's like, "Oh, look, there's a rat over there." So we look underneath the vending machine, and there's a rat standing like straight up. It looks like goddamn Master Shredder, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's looking at us because it knows that we saw it. Uh-huh. And then didn't you say some people saw us looking at it? Yeah, there was like some people coming out of the Don Quixote that were like it was like a couple and then some other guy. They were just looking at us. Like, because we were just... We were, like, squatting we in front like of a vending machine creeps. looking. Because it was a vending machine, and then behind the vending machine was kind of, like, a caged-off area of people were putting their trash. Right. And then there was a van. So we were, like, squatting over there looking like <laughs> absolute creeps. And then there's just people walking behind us laughing. Because we're trying to look at a rat. <laughs> <laughs> it was then, big, though. Do you, want, do you want to talk? They said do it for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wasn't drunk. <laughs> Uh-huh. Nothing. <laughs> That's a good uh, good way to start the story. And then Ivan said, "Oh, that girl in the wheelchair is a dog." <laughs> or no, what? I, <laughs> what? <laughs> no. I said something about a dog. No. Right? Ivan said, "Oh, look at that dog!" And a little girl in a wheelchair passes by, and Jam's like, "That's not a dog. That's, That's a, a girl, girl in a wheelchair." <laughs> and I said, "Jam." <laughs> That's not what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> but the second I said that, I remember thinking like. I didn't, I shouldn't have said that. Like, that wasn't nice at all. And each word was coming out, you're like, oh, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have said that. Yeah, like, <laughs> Why am I still talking? <laughs> and then I started crying. <laughs> I Immediately. Really I literally I felt started really crying. fucking bad. That was fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a and second then, to process that, too. As you're saying, I'm like, Jam, please. <laughs> no. It was like some <laughs> white girl, like a little girl. A little, like, innocent little white girl in a wheelchair. And she's like... Perfect she said, "That's the th- <laughs> to be fair. Like, what are you doing there? Like, she was with her parents, living her best life. Okay, all right. She, You're a fucking idiot it. if you travel with your children. I don't care how if they're not like fourteen, fifteen. Don't bring them anywhere. True. There was a especially I, you got a kid in a wheelchair in Shibuya where the streets are crowded. They have literally the busiest crosswalk in the world. That's true. That's not like not so what. Janet's and they don't. They don't have the laws to get." Made fun of. <laughs> they don't have the laws that we do where it's like mandatory to have like wheelchair access ramps, uh-huh. everything, Which everywhere. I feel like is a very fair thing to have, right? Yeah, like absolutely. I think a lot of countries they they have them. elevators, but like to get into the building itself, it's yeah stairs. Yeah, to go like stairs. down a block to get into an elevator that like eventually connects you into the building that I you want to go. I wonder right. what it's like being disabled. In a big city I've, in the, Japan. The thing is, I've seen a few disabled people, like this trip, uh, yeah. but Japanese people in wheelchairs and stuff, they have on, like, trains and stuff, um, like, the handicap, not the handicap section, but... Yeah, just, like, it, a bar, like, an open yeah. area, and then, like, a handlebar. And no one no on. one really stands in front of those because they know it's for handicapped people. Right. Uh, and when the conductors at the station see a handicapped person waiting in front of them, they ask them where they're going. They help them get on. They have like a little thing to help them get on, uh, and then there's someone already at the other station where they're going, waiting for them. So yeah, that's why I like. And then there's there's elevators and stuff. So getting around, I don't think is that hard. But I'm Maybe but there's some the shops. there's some buildings for sure that are not like Imagine wheelchair like, you friendly. You know how ones that let's say there's not stairs to get in, right? But it's a tiny little shop. You got this much room, like yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure it's very hard. Like yeah. even the sidewalks are just pretty narrow. 
It's, I mean, yeah. it's Japan. Everything's small. Yeah, Everybody no, but make a wheelchairs, about that? <laughs> wheelchairs aren't exactly... Let's, let's cripple you, Ivan, smart. and then see how you survive in a country where with a language that you also this don't speak. This man barely fits with his leg. Do you think he's going to fit with a fucking wheelchair? <laughs> no. I hit my I head on the doorknob taking a shit. They're not going to have a wheelchair wide enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to, like, break two of them, put them together, <laughs> sew it together. And then I got a wheelchair. <laughs> uh, there, damn, there was something else that uh, I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll talk more about the trip. But it was uh, it was a great experience. I fucking yeah. love Japan. Yep. Memes tombst. I just hope I'm not broke enough in the future to not be able to go back. Yeah, we got to go back after the Olympics, though. I'm not oh, going yeah. during the Olympics. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but uh, no, they're already prepping for it, so it's it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. It's very it, if you don't speak any Japanese. You're don't worry. fine. Don't worry yeah, about you'll be it. Fine. Yeah, just hit him with the old arigato gozaimasu. Yeah, <laughs> just hit him with that wakari masen. I don't yeah. understand. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, mo- yeah, most <laughs> most places have like English menus. Yeah, so it's very 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 easy. That or a little tell you. Or little touch pads where you just order off of pictures that also have English menus. So, I I really appreciate the type of restaurants where uh, like you, it's like a kiosk and you pay there and then yeah. you're just like here's I like I'd love to do that here. Yeah, I know that'd be it's amazing. It's not even a whole language. Like, you don't have to talk to like, I could just type w- exactly what I want and just be like, "Thank you." You just have to hand your ticket to someone, and then they'll just they make like your food. call out your number when your food's done. God, that's wonderful. And not, yeah, not even call it out but if you don't understand screen. it. It's on the screen. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Either that, or they'll come bring it to you. Right. So good don't time. yeah, not speaking the language is not a good enough reason not to go. Right. Definitely, definitely go and visit my new Japanese mommy. Mama. Oh. Mama, Mama Karage. Oh, man. <laughs> that was my favorite eating experience, honestly. Yeah, so Ivan and I got a new Japanese mom, and she is mm-hmm. fantastic. So, so nice that people drew pictures of her, and they're hanging up on her wall. Mm-hmm. Um, this I is, wish we knew the name of the restaurant, though. So, we don't... It's not even on Google Maps. That's right. how small this restaurant is. Uh, if you just look up uh, Science Bar Incubator in Yotsuya... It is on the same street. You it won't miss it because it's at the very end of the street. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just two doors down, not three, not like my th- favorite band. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's two <laughs> doors down, and it's just a little restaurant bar. Oh. Yeah, it it uh, only holds eight people total, and at the very front of it, it maybe just five Americans. Yeah, maybe maybe if that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the very front, just has Three a little items. handwritten sign that just says English is okay. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, like, all right, okay. And we'll yeah, you, you can get six pieces of homemade fried chicken and beer for ten dollars with the nicest Japanese woman you could ever meet. Yeah, her English is fantastic. It is. She was very, very welcoming. So we had a, we went twice. Yeah. All right, that was our very last uh, kind of meal there yeah, while we were the still there. I think I included it in the vlog, so that will come out at some point, and you guys can kind of get an idea of where it is and all that kind of shit. Remember yeah. when we went to that really confusing restaurant? No. The one where we ordered, but she didn't get us all our food? Oh, yeah. Oh, that <laughs> they, was a weird experience. They didn't speak any English at all. She was so sweet, But she though. she tried her very, very best. We still got We still got a good amount of food. Yeah. So now we're 30 minutes in. <laughs> what we usually do on the spit bucket, though, is uh, we bring up some fucking ridiculous stories from from fucking, the world. Uh, 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 damn. <laughs> uh, stories. This was short, but I had to I had to choose this story. Okay? okay, here we go. Man hospitalized after dog poo slip in <laughs> Pennington Road. <laughs> um, how tragic. <laughs> All right, so a pedestrian collapsed in the street after he slipped on dog poo and injured his ankle in uh, Pen- Penningtonville Road this afternoon. Uh, before we jump into that, Ivan, uh-huh. someone else that I know slipped on some poo-poo. All and right. that was you. <laughs> no, man, it didn't even happen. All right. Where do we even start? Jimmy. All right, so should we start with we brought so much shit it didn't fit in our luggage. We bought so much shit that would yeah. It didn't fit. Is that what I said? You said brought. Same thing. But still, you bought so much the night before we we're supposed to leave. We didn't pack anything. We literally just had our bags like in a closet, and then the very last night we're, we're like, like, all right, right let's, let's pack. pack it. And then we started packing it. We're like, where did all this stuff come from? <laughs> right. And so all of us noticed we have too much shit. Yeah. 
If it, even if it fit in our suitcases, it would have been way, way over. over. Yep. So we decided to go to our boy Donnie Q's in uh, <laughs> Shinjuku. And, and the thing that sucks too is we realized that we didn't have enough space at about midnight. Right. And that's when the train stopped running. Right. <laughs> so we couldn't get to Don Quixote, which was two miles away, until 7 a.m. Or six, it's like 6.30 when the train started running again. Right. And we were leaving that day. At 10. Uh, yeah, we had to leave at 10. Yeah. At this point, uh, we realized, of course, that we had incredibly too much stuff. Yep. And uh, it was like midnight. And then I'm like, you know what? Maybe we think that our suitcases weigh more than they do. I'm going to try to find a scale. <laughs> right. So everyone kind of gives me a little bit of money. And I just walk around for another 45 minutes going to as many stores as possible that are still open and trying to find just like a either a scale that we can put something on or like the little travel ones where you lift it and it'll tell you the weight of it nothing had it the only place that has like travel stuff that we know of that's open 24 hours is don quixote Mm -hmm. but it's too far to walk right uh and And a little too expensive to uber yeah it was so uh at this point it was like 1 a.m and like shit all right, there's literally nothing we could do but sleep, and me and Ivan will just wake up early in the morning to right. go to Don Quixote. Yep. And that's what we did. So that's and what we did. That was pretty, uh, it's pretty miserable. I'm throwing the ball to you now. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we get up. Barbecue sauce on our titties. <laughs> <laughs> Three, literally like four hours later yeah. on our very last 33-hour yeah. travel We're day. We're looking janky as fuck, mm-hmm. but we make our way to the train station. As soon as we pay for our tickets... And put our ticket through the machine. Oh, also, I only had 200 yen, which is the equivalent of $2 in yen. The rest of mine was in American. Yep. So that was literally the train ticket and nothing else that I could get. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. I put my ticket through the machine. And I'm like, damn, I got to (laughs) poop. It's like I just woke up. The ticket through the machine as in to get on the train. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like... (laughs) Yeah, because we literally just got up, brushed our teeth, and walked out the door. Yeah, so I didn't have time for my body to be like, hey, you just woke up. Time to, you know, do your yeah. daily activity, whatever. Yeah, it's trying to trying to poop the karaga right. that we had from that delicious restaurant the night before. Except I only had two pieces. So. <laughs> of which you paid it $10. <laughs> and then I paid $10 for it. <laughs> so just to be, when the bill came at that time, uh, it was like $45. And then uh, Ivan's like, I just want you guys to know that I only <laughs> ate two pieces of chicken. Also, here's $10. <laughs> you did have a beer, though, so. Yeah, so. Yeah. But uh, I guess it's an $8 <laughs> beer. <laughs> um, they give it like an expensive beer. Yeah, there you go. So, I'm like, damn, I gotta poop. And then Omar was like, do you want to poop here or like at the store? I'm like, I'll wait. You know, I don't want to slow us down. <laughs> so we go through the train that was a mistake mm-hmm. so we were on the train and it's starting to get worse but slowly I'm like oh man I gotta poop and the train ride's only like five minutes right so we get off the station we start walking towards you know the exit I'm like I I actually gotta poop and I remember Ivan told me as soon as we passed like the first gate he's like dude I gotta poop <laughs> and like, like <laughs> and it wasn't wait, that bad so why was- didn't you poop at the train station if you were already having that feeling because it wasn't that bad. It was just like, I think I can wait. You know? Like, till we get to the store. I'll do it there. And then we come back. Right? All right. All right. Li- unbeknownst to us, but Jam knew about it. There's no bathroom at that Don Quixote. I knew that. Yeah. Because you texted me. I'm you shook. You were... All right. Continue. Like, continue the story. Yeah. All right. So, we're walking out. The, more, the closer we get to the exit of the train station, the more I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> this is going to happen. <laughs> but we, we exit... And I'm like, all right, let's just get to the store, and then I'm going to poop. But in my head, I said that. We're going. It's kind of taking long, not long, but it's taking longer than I expected to get there. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, shit. So, <laughs> Literally. I know at some point, I told Omar. Like, it's just a good walk from the train station to yeah. that Donny Q specifically. It, it's about a 10-minute walk. Yeah, so I know at some point, I told Omar, I'm like, I'm going to have to go as soon as we get to the store. Yeah. Like, oh, it oh always happens, God. too. Like, the closer you get to where you think a bathroom uh-huh. is, the more you have to poo. And also, the more movement you do, like, it, it makes your body want to start taking stuff out. I'm getting flashbacks right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, PTSD. my stomach's starting this, to hurt. I just, this. Yeah, it is. I'm just telling you, it was not a good time. I was literally starting to, I was starting to sweat from, like, 
<laughs> how much energy I was putting into like holding your shit, holding in. my composure, and like trying to get there fast. Because uh-huh. even if you shit your pants, buying pants was not an option because you couldn't even find a belt Mm-mm. that could fit you right now. <laughs> I found one belt. <laughs> Also, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I ate my belt. <laughs> I ate my belt. So, um, so we're we're starting to get to the home stretch of getting there. I'm like, oh man, here we go. Finally, get in there. I'm like, oh, I'm looking for a bathroom immediately. And we go up to the third floor where the suitcases are. I check that the, floor. There, we walked the stairs. There was right. no elevator there. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a good chunk of ch- chicken so, stairs. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is so each floor. Awful. <laughs> so. We go up to the third floor. I made sure I stood in front of them just in case on the mm-hmm. stairs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I checked that floor, nothing. I'm like, all right, I'm going up a floor. <laughs> At this point, I'm like, Omar, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look for a bathroom. Like, all right, <laughs> we were there was only four floors, and the top floor is just like the porn floor. That's right. where you buy your flashlights. I, I went up the stairs, and I see. I don't think we've been to that floor. We have not. I see Tenga is like a big ass sign there for the fourth floor. I'm like, oh, this is just the sex shop <laughs> like, floor section. Yeah. I'm like, maybe there will be a bathroom on there. So I go up the to the fourth. I floor. can try my Tenga out. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm like, oh fuck this. So I go down. He's he's at this point considering shitting inside uh-huh. a uh, one use flashlight uh-huh. because no one will find that in there. Right. <laughs> so I'm kidding, but uh, nothing's on the fourth floor. I'm like, all right, let me go down to the second floor. Nothing. Check the first floor. No, I didn't check the first floor yet. I go to the basement. I'm like, the grocery section's gonna have to have one. <laughs> go down to the you basement. Do you have a grocery section in that one? The basement yeah. is yeah. what? Because you go on the first floor, and if you go down the stairs, it's a grocery. Oh, okay. Yeah. So go down there. Nothing. And I'm like, all and right. The, the main floor at, doesn't look like it has one, but let me check. At this point, too, I'm on the third floor looking for suitcases. Right. And I have the Wi-Fi. Ivan doesn't have internet because he's. Two floors below me. I don't know where he is. Last time I saw him, he's just like, I'm going to go find a bathroom. And then it's been like 30 minutes. And also, we're, I'm looking through the suitcases, and even the small carry-ons are like $120. Ooh. I'm like, I don't have that money on me. Right. <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, I'm also freaking out trying to find a suitcase that I can afford because I have to buy two, one for us and one for Carl. Right. And uh, Carl gave me twelve dollars. <laughs> she said, "Don't spend it all in one place." Yeah, she's like, "See what you can find me for twelve dollars." I'm like, uh, they're a hundred and they're ten times more than what you gave me. You texted me that that they were expensive because I think I texted you like, "How's it going?" Any luck? And you're like, "No, they're kind of expensive." Or I got some something, and you said you lost Ivan. Because he wants to go find a bathroom. Yeah. And I texted you, I'm like, that one doesn't have a bathroom. And Ooh. then I couldn't even text Ivan because he gone. didn't have any service. He was gone. <laughs> he was gone. So I'm just like, all right, well, wh- what the fuck do I do? Because I, I finally managed in the very, very back to find two little carry-ons. They were only $40 each, so I bought the two for us on my card. And then I'm like, all right, well, n- now that I bought them, where the fuck's Ivan? Right. So then I go all the way downstairs, I go outside, and I'm like, I don't know where the fuck he is, but at some point he's got to exit the store. Mm-hmm. So I think he's in the store. So I'm like, at some point he's got to exit, I'll catch him on the way out. And that's that's when I texted <laughs> you, and you're like, there's no bathroom. I'm like, where the fuck is Ivan? Damn. So I was on an adventure. <laughs> and then I texted you like, uh, well, I know you got the suitcases, you're looking for Ivan. Just text me when you meet up with him again. And it was hours it wasn't hours. It was another like forty minutes. Though. It was. It was a while. It was a long time. Yeah. So Ivan was having a day out. Right. <laughs> so at this point, check the basement floor. Nothing. I'm like, God damn it! There's not a bathroom <laughs> in this five floor and establishment. The thing, the thing about Japan is that they don't really have public bathrooms just for like anyone to like waltz into. That's not true. That's true, though. We, went, we were in, like, Dome City and stuff like that. There's bathrooms there. Like, yeah, because that was, like... We went to, like, a park, like and there's bathrooms. An arena, at a park, of course. But if you're, like, in the city, you have to go into, like, a restaurant. Right. And, like, like, an establishment. Isn't that the same... Like, if you're in Chicago, there's no just bathroom. I mean, you could go into McDonald's, but there's, like, no McDonald's in Shinjuku. Right. There's places here that are, like, 24-7. You know, like, I can go pee, I can go poop. There's a Walmart. Without having to buy anything. Right. Walmart Whereas is Whereas a lot the of these example. places are kind of smaller. And if uh, you, it's, I, I get it. It's more intimate. You have to go in, look at yeah. someone in the eyes before you walk exactly. through. Exactly. Okay. Sure. Right. Okay. So I'm like, 
there's no fucking bathroom in this five floors of this building, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I got to check another place. I got to leave. So I go back to the first floor. <laughs> and I have no idea where he out, is. And the people say bye to me. I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, see you later, I guess. Anyways, I walk out. I'm sweating at this point, guys. Like, cold sweat. <laughs> um, I go outside. I'm like, all right. I literally stood there for a second. I look both ways. I'm like, where do I go? What's your plan at this point? Literally just find anywhere that's open. The, the, yeah, a lot of places in Japan don't open until about 11. And at this and point, it it's, like it's 7.30, 7 yeah. Yeah, 7.30. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? We've been out for at least an hour at this point. Yep. Because I can think of the the Burger King. That's the, not open until 11. Oh, shit. Because I was like, all of these like bigger chain restaurants have to have a bathroom that you can just walk into. But you're right, they they don't, yeah, they, they don't, don't open until late, and I don't know how well you know the area to be like, oh yeah, the McDonald's is right past the this The streets place. we were on, I don't remember ever being there, so I was kind of like, no, uh, that's exact. That's exactly where we'd hang out all the time. Damn. Well, I didn't remember it, so. <laughs> but yeah, I was our navigator the whole time we were there. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I mean, you, all you had to do was follow us, right? So that you yeah. didn't have a reason to memorize anything, right? So I look down one street, I see a family mart. I'm like, all right. Let's try my Which luck. is like a convenience store. Wasn't too far, you know, a few feet down. Run in there, check, no bathroom. <laughs> it was pretty big, too. I'm like, how does this place not have a bathroom? Run out. I look across <laughs> the street, and there's no stores that are open at all. He's so holding like, his ass at this point. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I look across the street, nothing. Nothing, like, further down the street, either. Uh-huh. So I go back around in front of the Donnie Q's. I look that way. There's like an underground mall where there's a uh, currency exchange machine that's open 24 hours. The doors for the underground mall where there is a bathroom were closed. Yeah, so I saw that. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go down there. Run towards it. Look around the corner. That shit walled off. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's not open At this yet. point, were you considering just shitting in there and just running away? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no. honestly, like at the very bottom of the steps? Right. Completely honest. How close were you to just being like, fuck it, I'm going to find an alley and I'm going to shit in an alley? Not that close yet, but I was getting real to the point where like... But it was I crossing will, your mind. Any bathroom, I will do. I will pay somebody, like, <laughs> let me in. Yeah, I had like 90 bucks or something like that. So I was like, I'll pay somebody like fucking uh, $20. Bucks. Yeah, $20 will be going to your apartment and poop or something. <laughs> no, but so I saw that and I'm like, this fucking sucks. Like, what am I going to do? And then I go back up and I see the 7-Eleven sign and I'm like... Thank God, right? But then I'm like, wait, that's the fucking ATM that we just got. That money is just from. the Seven Eleven ATM. So I'm like, oh, okay. okay. So and I all keep... it is is just uh, like 13 ATMs in a room, and that's it, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I'm fucked. I keep going down that street though, back to where we came from, and then I see another Family Mart. So I'm like, okay, let me try my luck in there. <laughs> I walk in. At first, I see nothing, right? <laughs> what, if, what if you walk in, and it was the same family where you just were at? <laughs> you went around the block the opposite no, way. This looks you different. I'm like, oh, this looks different. No, but, so I walk in. It's so tiny, right? I'm like, there, oh, there's not a fucking bathroom. <laughs> but I go all the way to the end, just in case, and then I see a sliver of a door that has a, a bathroom sign above it, right? So I'm like, okay, we, here, here we here go. It Let's is. just jump into it, you know? <laughs> Did you have to squeeze to get in you had to go in sideways just a little bit just a little bit <laughs> well luckily nobody was in there right so i go in it's the jankiest bathroom i've seen in japan <laughs> that shit is like the walls are like almost black and, like, <laughs> the to- luckily the toilet wasn't filthy yeah i'm sure it like had a lot of germs on it but like there wasn't like stuff on it that you uh. can see there was a sock in one of the corners <laughs> The sink was dirty as fuck. Uh, it was, like, not really much of a sink. It was just, like, a porcelain I mean, thing. if that's the only bathroom you could find, imagine all the tourists that tear through the fucking town trying to find a bathroom at, like, whatever hours of the night or hours of the morning, and that's the only bathroom they can find, too. Right. So, and these people are like, we're not going to put that much effort into cleaning this because right. some other big-ass American or something's going to come in here mm-hmm. and fucking wreck this. Right. And I'll let you know. I, I mean... I didn't, like, tear up the bathroom. Like, I just had to go really badly. Did you like, put the paper down and all that? Or you're just like, I'm no. sitting in shit. Was it more of a solid I, no, or I, more I of a liquid? It. Oh, you did clean it? I can't tell. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I did clean it, but I I didn't, like, put paper down. Shit. Yeah, well, they I have a... time for this. I'm going to give it a good <laughs> wiping down real quick. They, down. Yeah, they usually have a little, uh, little sanitizer spray that you put on toilet paper to then, <laughs> 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 to then wipe down the seat. Right. Okay. So you just uh, gave it a wipe. Yeah, so I gave it a wipe. I'm like, all right, this is good enough for me. I'll get tetanus if I have to. <laughs> so, you know, I use the bathroom. I'm like, all right, this is great. You wash my hands. Just 
Right. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. The atomic bomb went off three and times said, in Japan. <laughs> Nothing else matters now. I'm good. Like, crisis averted. <laughs> and so, how clo- I, like, if that family mart was closed, how close were you to having it slip out of your anus? I have no idea how much how, longer it could have gone. Were you just going to anally cough and it was going to come out? Yeah, if I would have sneezed, <laughs> it would have been over. Yeah, it was that over. close. <laughs> wow. I love that. It was a bad time, guys. <laughs> I was so angry before that. So, <laughs> I'm like, this sucks. You know? Are you finally in the bathroom? You're, I was still a little angry, but I'm like, all right. Your I'll use dump the came out. Yeah, I'm, I'm you done. cleaned up. Cleaned up. Put yourself I'm, back together. Uh-huh. And <laughs> Put I his clothes back on. <laughs> yeah, he's like, the unfortunate thing is I had to take all of my clothes off before I poop. <laughs> he, was, he was wearing one of those like uh, those singlets that women wear. <laughs> like the, the snap crutch. No, I was wearing <laughs> a fucking romper. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I step out the bathroom. L- little did I... No, there was a little step that I took before to get into the bathroom that I forgot about. I missed that step, right? (laughs) Throws me off balance. (laughs) There's nothing to hold on to. I reach my arms out to left and right. Nothing to hold on to. My dumbass falls with all of my weight landing on one single knee. <laughs> and all you hear is just a loud ass thud, and I go, "Fuck!" <laughs> is it really loud? <laughs> well, because it was loud, because you know, like all my weight fell on my knee, but then also my hand slapped on the <laughs> and the floor cracked. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, it's like a you know what what's the f- t- it's Lin- tile linoleum linoleum tile. So that shit uh, was like loud as fuck. Two big ass hands, you know, <laughs> two go, bear paws on the I ground. Go, fuck. <laughs> I pull myself Two up a little bit. Hand. <laughs> yep. The thing is, like, no matter where you're from, everyone knows what fuck it means. Right. Like, <laughs> so, I get up. <laughs> a, a little bit. I'm not even, like, up, up. I just, like, pull myself up. I look. <laughs> just here. Crack, crack, crack. I look to my right, and the, the gentleman behind the counter just looks over at me. And so you're looks still back on the floor when he looks at you. <laughs> to me, and then he just I goes back that. to what he's doing. <laughs> and then another guy also just looks at me. <laughs> And then goes back to what he was doing. I'm like, I'm going to get out of here. No, very respectful people. Pull myself up by my bootstrap. <laughs> and I walk straight out of there holding my knee. <laughs> so, so, so from their eyes, a, a sweaty man comes in looking panicked. Walks to the back of their establishment. Goes to the bathroom. They just hear a giant collapse. Uh-huh. And someone going, Fuck! <laughs> They look over and he's on that I'm same on sweaty floor. man is on the ground <laughs> and then just defeated. <laughs> and then instead of buying anything, he, <laughs> he walked out of their lives forever. I think it was best for all of us to oh. exit each other's lives, you know. Oh god. Oh man. The good thing is that I walked out, right? <laughs> And I immediately like, saw... Shit, I'm lost. No, I saw, like, three or four really fucking drunk people walking down the street. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I probably just look like a drunk dude. <laughs> I don't look like some kind of fucking maniac who just c- came out of thin air and fell on the ground like I came through a fucking portal. I'm like, where am I? <laughs> they didn't see you go in, right? <laughs> probably not. Because I, snuck, I didn't sneak, but, like, I went around the back where, like, you can't see through yeah, the yeah. shelves. And so, out of nowhere, there to see a large Mexican man fall out of nowhere and then run out of the store. <laughs> Holding his knee. God, that was a bad... That was a rough time, guys. Oh, my God. And then after funny. that, you still had to go home. Oh, back to the apartment, clean up. No. After that, I had to go... How far were you from me? Not that far. It was, like, down the street. It was a decent walk. But, like, <coughs> go down the street. I had to go... I found Omar. I had to go in and buy the suitcase. <laughs> He had to go up those out. stairs with his wonky knee. Oh my wa- no, How relieved so were you pain. when you found him? Huh? How relieved were you when you found him? Well, uh, when he walked <clears throat> in front of the store, I'm like, where the fuck were you? He, <laughs> and he just looks at me and goes... <sighs> <laughs> Hands on his hips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's like, I am having the worst morning. <laughs> I've never seen Ivan look so sad <laughs> to exist. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking shitty day, guys. I had to, I had to tell you, it was, it was the worst. <laughs> on four hours of sleep, Ivan has a shit and falls <laughs> on his knee. I shattered my knee pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So then I bought the suitcase, came back down, 
and then we went on in our merry way back. That was fucking miserable. <laughs> I think the moral <laughs> of the story is that don't expect to go anywhere and in Japan and have the expectation of there being a bathroom there. Or You're at a also, train station, go at the train station, even if you yeah, don't think it's true. that big of a deal at the moment. Because you'd never know where you'd go. But the ones you will run into are most likely nice, other than the one Ivan ran into. That's literally the only nasty one I've found the entire time there. The other moral of the story is at least you didn't slip on dog dew. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I forgot we were talking about that. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I brought this story up. I thought it was perfect. Uh, So police and paramedics were called, uh, and the man has been taken to the hospital with a suspected broken ankle. Can you imagine if you broke Damn. your knee awesome. in Japan? On awesome. some boo-boo? Some doggy boo-boo? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... What if you tore your ACL in Japan? I mean, it could have happened. I landed on my knee. could have happened. <laughs> uh, the Mets Road and Transportation Team teeted out, tweeted out, traffic officers were flagged down while on patrol near the area, uh, saying that a man collapsed. First... <laughs> First aid was rendered to the man who had slipped on the dog waist and, and had sustained a broken ankle. What I imagine is he literally passed out and someone was performing CPR. Well, it it's like, but, smells like boo boo. I remember one time in elementary school, I tripped and slid so much so that when I fell, I fell on my back and my leg ended up being twisted, almost <laughs> landing on my shoulder. And I had like, <clears throat> like you felt like they do on Family Guy, but. In reverse. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, like, the people that are watching the kids get off the bus and everything. This uh, lady ran up to me, and she's like, are you all right? Is your leg broken? And she just held me up, and I just ran to class because I was embarrassed. <laughs> uh, so, first aid was <laughs> rendered... <laughs> a family guy fall. <laughs> <laughs> first aid was rendered to the man who slipped on the dog waist and sustained a broken ankle until his care could be handled over to the London Ambulance Services. The manager of the London Luggage Co., was asked to remain anonymous. I just saw the... Po- Can you do a British accent? I just saw the police and the ambulance outside. I can't do a British accent. Damn. Hello, governor. <laughs> right? All right, I'm going to try to do it. I saw the police oh. and the ambulance outside. There was a man on the... Ga- what the uh, fuck? I'm very confused on where this is going. <laughs> there, <laughs> there was a man on gas and air. He looked like he was in a lot of pain. Probably. What the fuck does that mean, Britain? I don't know. There was a man on gas and air. I don't know the gas, but on air probably means like an oxygen tank. Oh, shit! He felt that bad? <laughs> probably. Uh, she said that the dog poo has then since been removed. I well, mean, I sure hopefully, hope so. you, that, that should have happened regardless. <laughs> That's Moral of the funny. story, pick up your fucking dog shit, man. It's man. not hard to get the little attachment for your dog's leash. You know, you're fucking bags. killing people and shit, damn near. Yeah, uh, the funny, there was another story, that I didn't read it, but uh, the headline for it, I'm just like, oh wow, this is kind of funny, because it coincides with this other story. Mm-hmm. It was just about an apartment complex who was using DNA to analyze dog poo on the premise to know whose dog did what. Wow. Damn. So that way they can call people out. That's petty. It is, yeah, right? I love that though. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I remember uh, when I was living on Clearview, uh, if you go up the street, there was two grocery bags completely full of dog shit. It wasn't even grocery bags. It was like, what, what's the the smaller size of a kitchen trash bag? Whatever those are. You guys Whatever can picture that. What, yeah. So there were, it was two full bags of, uh, of dog shit, and they were just dog. tied up in front of the street, and someone wrote a sign that says, pick up you dog shit. So, I don't know if it was a mistranslation, and the person didn't know how to say, pick up your dog shit, or if he missed a comma. Like, full, like, lumps of dog shit in this yeah. bag. And this bag was pretty transparent, so you could see <laughs> everything. So, the guy was either saying, pick up your dog shit, or pick up your dog, you, you dog, you shit. dog shit. Pick up you That's dog, dog shit. That's the importance of commas. <laughs> right, the Oxford comma. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a big old deal, wild. huh? You remember when... <laughs> You literally stepped outside of my house on Clearview, mm-hmm. and you stepped into a big pile of dog shit, but I didn't even have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a dog that lived in front of you, though. He said, who, wait, wait a second. <laughs> he was known to sneak under his fence. Like, he would dig giant holes to go under his fence. It was a big old Labrador. So I wouldn't be surprised if he just got out, took a shit, mm. and went back. I kind of shared a backyard with some other house that was, like, around the corner. 
I know it was that dog. It was fucking Max. Max, get that's over the one. here. That's the one. Is it that? Yeah, one? that's the one. He would always sneak under his fence and like run away. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, that's actually all we got for you guys this week. I, we had more. Story. We had more news stories, but uh, we kind of hit our limit for this week. So we, we this ni- like ninety five percent of this podcast is about either toilets or poop. I'm okay. With oh that. shit! You're right. It has been. This is a shitty episode. <laughs> uh, so if you guys enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. We are back on a weekly basis. Uh, more poop to, stories to come. Yeah, hopefully. more poop stories to come. Uh, share it with your friends. The spit buckets back. Let everyone know. Yeah, I want to talk about how Alex was like. Yeah, I'm down to record it this time. This, Where he at? This day, this time. He said, yep, I'll be there. First Where the <laughs> fuck is he? Where he at, though? I don't know. Alex, where are you at? Alex, please Enjoy come your back. WrestleMania Sunday. Not that it's going to come out soon. Yeah, we're going to go but watch some WrestleMania. WrestleMania Sunday. <laughs> this will be the week after WrestleMania. Yeah, you so hopefully it. you had a good WrestleMania Sunday. Uh, my name's Omar. You guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at underscore the shark boy. My name's Jam. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at really underscore cool. Turns out, I don't like posting, so... Yeah, you're scared of posting. Interesting. My Twitter's lit as fuck, though. Follow her oh. on Twitter. Um, my name's Ivan. You can find me on Instagram at iproto95. I'm not scared of posting, I just don't have a life to post about. Yeah. Ivan, Ivan used to post pictures of him sucking his own dick, but then Instagram told him to please take those down. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's spicy. <laughs> yeah. Also, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> After your knee incident? Yeah. My knee's shattered, guys. There's only fractions Uh, of what used to be my knee. Leave an F in the chat for Ivan. And my knee. And his knee, specifically. We'll see you guys next week, and we're glad to be back. You bought over $180 worth of plushies from the Pokemon Center. All right, we'll not get into... We're not going to get into how many Pikachus I bought. Holy fuck, I just realized how many you have. (laughs) Look at all my Eevees. And, like, it's not that many in a sense of, like, it's not like a million, but... I know how expensive each one is. Yeah, what of it? This is like... This is my house. I I do what I want. $180. All right. Fuck. Take it easy. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week at the Espeet (laughs) Mokiet. Surprise! (laughs) (laughs) And also, in the comments, let us know what your favorite wish is. Oh, no. What's What's your your favorite favorite wish? wish? I gotta go. Thank you.